Hi, we're Laura and Craig from Cruise Lifestyle. We took a 14-night cruise on P&O Aria and wanted to share everything we ate whilst on board. We tried out the included options and some of the specialty dining to help you decide what to book so you can make the most of the dining on your Aria cruise. This video comes with a warning though, you may feel hungry after watching this. Let's start with the casual food options on P&O Avia. These are all included in your cruise fare, so there's no need to worry about how often you eat in these places or how much you order. You also don't need to worry about any dress codes in these venues. Firstly, let's start in the Horizon Buffet on deck 16. It was probably our least favourite food venue on board because it was just so busy, especially during breakfast, lunch and late at night. We couldn't believe how many people would go to the buffet for late night snacks. We did try some of the hot chocolate that everyone had raved about and we didn't think it lived up to the hype. We did eat in the buffet on the first night because we just wanted something quick, but inevitably ended up with an eclectic mix of all sorts on our plates. We also tried some scones one afternoon, but they weren't anything to write home about. If you do choose to eat in the buffet, our tip is to try and find a table towards the back of the ship, and there's even this outside area that's a much quieter place to eat. In contrast, Next is one of our favourite places to grab a quick meal without the queues. The Keys. This definitely does live up to the hype. The Keys is located on deck 8 and offers three food stations. There's Hook, Line and Vinegar serving fish and chips. Asian fusion serving East Asian noodle and rice dishes and the roast carvery where you can get a roast dinner in a Yorkshire pudding or a Yorkshire pudding wrap. The choices at each station changed slightly each day. For example, there's a different roast meat at the carvery. We particularly enjoyed the fish and chips from here as well as the katsu curry. We had both of these on more than one occasion. We also tried the prawn and coconut Thai green curry, the roast beef in a giant Yorkshire pudding and a Yorkshire pudding wrap. I'm not a huge fan of eating roast dinner on a cruise, but it was definitely a popular choice with many cruisers. It's worth knowing that if you pass all three food stations, you come to an extra section tucked away. Here there's a selection of cold sides, we particularly like the potato salad from here, and desserts. We chose a cheesecake with random mini marshmallows and a rocky road brownie. Both were perfect portions to accompany our meal. Finally, the other casual food outlet on P&O Aria can be found in the Sky Dome on Deck 16. Taste 360 serves burgers, hot dogs, pizzas and rotisserie chicken and this is a fast food option you can take away in a basket. The crew are constantly making up food so you can simply grab what you like without having to wait. We had the hot dogs and fries from here which was perfect when we didn't want anything too fussy for lunch. On Arvia, you may also come across some grab-and-go fridges on Deck 16 near the Infinity Pool. We don't believe they've been used since Arvia started sailing, but if you see these fridges stocked with sandwiches and salads, do let us know in the comments. Next, let's move on to the included dining options on P&O Arvia. These are where you can have a sit-down meal for lunch and dinner, and in some cases, breakfast too. The Meridian and Zenith main dining rooms are at the very back of the ship on Deck 6 and 7. These both offer the same menu and the only difference we could see was that the Meridian restaurant was on deck 6 and had huge windows at the back and Zenith was on deck 7 and had tablecloths on the tables. Generally, the food in the main dining rooms was a good standard. It was mostly British cuisine on the menu with something like a curry or a chilli. Service was never rushed, but the Zenith seemed to be a bit calmer than the Meridian restaurant. Both these dining rooms are open for breakfast from 7.30 to 9.30am. We much preferred having breakfast here. It was a much more relaxed way to start the day and you could still choose healthy options and hearty breakfasts without having to endure the hustle and bustle of the buffet. You can just turn up to be seated either on a shared table or on your own. For breakfast, we had Eggs Benedict, which was really nice, smoothie of the day, avocado on toast with a hint of chilli and cooked breakfasts. We had no complaints with anything but be aware that items are served in the order on the menu. So if you have a shared table, items like toast and porridge are served before the cooked items. It's also worth knowing that it's a relaxed dress code for breakfast so as long as you don't turn up in your swimwear, you should be fine. The Meridian restaurant is open for lunch between 12 and 1.30 but we never made it here on our cruise. Here's a sample lunch menu from our first sea day so you can get an idea of the food available. We did dine in the Meridian and Zenith dining rooms for dinner on a few occasions, including one of the celebration nights. So here are some of the menus and dishes we chose. As you can see, the vegetarian and gluten-free menu options are indicated on the menus really clearly. For our first dinner in the Zenith dining room, we chose the Gravlax of salmon with Scandinavian dressing and buttered rye bread. The 6 ounce beef sirloin with vegetables, thick cut chips and a bonnet sauce. The prime roast sirloin with roast potatoes, vegetables and a red wine jus. 
a vegan option which was roasted cauliflower with baby gem lettuce, carrot and potato crisp, as well as vegetable and bean chilli taco shells, also vegan and gluten free. For dessert we had the baked treacle tart with sauce on glaze and some ice cream. For our first meal in the Meridian restaurant we had the serrano ham and poached pears with gorgonzola and grapes and Singapore style chicken satay with stir fry vegetables. For main course we had sweet and sour chicken with egg fried rice and prawn cracker, the Highland Salmon Wellington and wild mushroom risotto with winter truffle and crisp onions. For dessert we ordered a classic lemon posset with jelly, plum compote and brandy snap and a warm Monmouth meringue pudding. On our second visit to the Meridian restaurant we ordered tomato soup to start with the chicken, ham hock and apricot terrine followed by the go-in vegetable curry, which happened to be one of the vegan options that evening. Our desserts were the coconut and lemongrass panna cotta, sticky toffee cake and mixed fruit crumble with custard. We dined in the Zenith restaurant for the final celebration night. This menu is particularly nice, so we definitely recommend going to one of the main dining rooms on the last celebration night of the cruise. The meal began with an amuse-bouche. For our starters, we chose the smoked and cured fish dish, which included salmon mackerel and Cornish crab, a selection of Middle Eastern dips, and parma ham with shaved manchego curado and black truffle oil. For our main course, we had the grilled duo of pork and beef fillets and the cheese souffle. This was very cheesy, but it was expected. For dessert, we ordered the trio of chocolate, passion fruit sorbet and the blueberry souffle. We were really pleased that the waiter recommended the blueberry souffle because it was one of the best desserts we had for the entire cruise. When it comes to booking a table, we would recommend booking some of your dining in advance, especially the celebration nights, using the My Holiday online page. Find the link in this video's description. You can do this up to 14 days before your cruise, but reservations can only be made for the early evening between 5.30 and 6.30. On nights when we didn't have a reservation, we found that going to the restaurant desk and collecting a buzzer was far quicker than joining the virtual queue. We would then go to Anderson's Bar nearby and wait to be buzzed whilst enjoying a drink. The Sixth Street Diner is exclusive to Arvia and is open for breakfast, brunch and dinner. We ate here for brunch and dinner. It's located on Deck 6 Aft on the port side. The Sixth Street Diner is a good casual option if you're looking for food that's a little less fancy. You can eat here and not have to worry about a dress code either. It makes you feel like you're stepping into an American diner from the 50s. There's a playfulness about it from the pop art deco and choosing your own songs on the jukebox. The diner has menu A and menu B that rotate every few Few days. For brunch we chose from menu A and had buffalo wings tossed in buffalo sauce with blue cheese dressing, sticky pork ribs, shrimp po boy and a portion of loaded fries. Buffalo wings were a bit dry but the Cajun fried shrimp was very tasty and full of flavour. For dinner we dined when menu A was being used. Here's menu B for you to compare. For dinner at the Sixth Street Diner, the starters we chose were Reuben croquettes, which were good, New England clam chowder, which was okay, and corn tortilla trio with guacamole, salsa and coriander. For our main course, the Cajun jumbo shrimp on buttery cheesy slow-cooked corn meal and wilted greens was a good choice. Nashville hot chicken sandwich, the Sixth Street New York strip was cooked exactly to order, and the Louisiana barbecue chicken. Finally, for dessert, we tried the key lime pie, but it was more like a lemon meringue pie, to be honest and the fried apple hush puppies, which were much nicer and just enough after the meal. We definitely found some hits and misses throughout the meals, but overall, the Sixth Street Diner is a refreshing change for P&O cruises. On Arvia, the Olive Grove is an included restaurant serving Mediterranean cuisine. We definitely enjoyed our meal here and wished that we had dined here a few more times. It's a popular restaurant, so it might be worth making a reservation in advance. Like the Sixth Street Diner, it has two menus that rotate, so there's a good amount of choice if you choose to dine here a couple of times during your cruise. The restaurant itself is quite plain and it can get very busy, but the food we had was pretty good. If you're finding this video helpful, please hit the like button now to help more people find it. This was menu A. For starters, we ordered the Greek mezzo and the pan-fried king prawns in garlic and chilli. We tried the roasted peach and prosciutto salad, which was a very small portion and we'd wished we'd had twice as much. For our main course, we had the mushroom ravioli, the seafood chicken and chorizo bomba rice, which was very much like a paella, and the lasagna verde. Finally, for dessert, we ordered the Turkish baklava, which was just enough to round the meal off. There are several other things we'd have happily ordered, so definitely don't miss this restaurant. There's also a special menu that's served in the Olive Grove on celebration nights. There's an excellent alternative to the Meridian and Zenith dining rooms. 
The one last included dining option on Arvia is the chef's table, but it's only available on celebration nights and must definitely be booked before your cruise. The major downside to the chef's table is that it's served in the Horizon Buffet, which doesn't really feel special enough for a menu designed by Marco Pierre White. We dined here on the first celebration night and it just felt a bit weird. The meal began with a shot of gazpacho with Piano Cruises Maribel Gin. Our starters were cream of Jerusalem artichoke soup, shrimp with smoky pimento mayonnaise and the white tomato panna cotta with tomatoes and pesto. Out of these, the Atlantic shrimp was the best starter. For main course, we chose the lobster and king prawn, but we were disappointed that the amount of lobster was so tiny. We also ordered the puccini mushroom and roasted garlic ravioli. And no, it's not a Haribo fried egg on top, it's actually a quail egg. The fillet of turbot was nice, but sadly the veg looked like they'd seen better days. Desserts were better. We enjoyed the dark and milk chocolate tonka bean teardrop with strawberries and cherries jubilee, followed by coffee with champagne and white chocolate truffles. Overall, having done the chef's table, we wouldn't try it again and would instead enjoy celebration night in one of the main dining rooms or the Olive Grove. On to specialty restaurants on P&O Arvia. These are restaurants that you pay extra for and are great to try, especially on a longer cruise. The most affordable option is the Beach House, which is a pop-up restaurant available in the evenings in a section of the buffet. It serves Caribbean and Latin American cuisine for just £9.50 per person and fits much better in the buffet than the chef's table. For starters, we chose pork belly and pork crackling with a salsa dip, the Mexican poke bowl and island spiced chicken wings. There are a few items you can pay extra for. These were all included in the price. For main course, we ordered the Taco Trio, slow cooked curry goat pot with rice and roti bread and the Caribbean seafood basket with crab cakes, spice prawns, mahi mahi goujons and salt fish fritter. For a dessert after all that food you managed to eat the rum glazed roasted pineapple with mojito sorbet which was exceptionally sweet and tasty, the banana split in a taco shell and we splashed out on a toasted marshmallow fondue sharer which was £4 extra. We think the beach house is great for casual dining in the evening without having to worry about a dress code. On to one of the most popular specialty dining restaurants on P&O Cruises, Sindhu. Sindhu on deck 8 is best described as a modern Indian restaurant with British influences. You're less likely to find typical dishes from your high street Indian restaurant here, but you won't be disappointed. If you want something on the menu to be made a little extra hot, you can just ask. When you book, you pay a £10 deposit, which is deducted from your final bill. Dishes are priced individually, and if you've booked Sindhu before the cruise, you will get an extra 20% off the final bill. We dined here twice on our 14-night cruise and enjoyed it on both occasions. Poppadoms and dips are brought to the table at the beginning of your meal. Between us, we managed to try every starter on the menu. Here they are. Tandoori lamb cutlets with a masala sauce. Cumin and chilli buttered chicken breast with coriander mayonnaise. Carolyn style spiced crab meat. Just be aware that some crab shell may be left in this dish. Go in masala stew with pork belly and chorizo. The puff flatbread bites. And the rice and lentil pancake. For main course we chose the tandoori style duck breast which was particularly well cooked. The red chicken curry with egg noodles. The vegetarian tali plate. The Sindhu signature plate, which features duck breast, beef masala and lobster. This was so good and excellent value at just £15. Desserts at Sindhu definitely have a British influence. This is the Sindhu bread and butter pudding and the elements of trifle dessert. If you're in search of fine dining on Piano Arvia, the Epicurean is your best option. This restaurant offers breakfast for sweet guests only, a special afternoon tea and dinner. We booked to eat here one evening and it cost £24 per person. This is a set price and you can choose a starter, main course and a dessert. The meal began with a watermelon amuse bouche, followed by starters. We had the king prawn and Mediterranean octopus cocktail, which seemed to have an awful lot of cocktail sauce and not much prawn or octopus. We thought we'd made a mistake dining here, but the rest of the meal certainly made up for it. For main course, we chose the Dorset Crown lamb rump and minted Greek yogurt, and the Redmond limousine, Irish beef fillet and ox cheek. Both dishes were exceptional and nicely cooked with plenty of flavour. We chose asparagus and thick cut chips for our sides. In between the main course and dessert, we enjoyed a sorbet. For dessert, we decided on crepe Suzette and the elements of trifle dessert. For £24 per person, we thought that this was excellent value for money and would certainly book the Epicurean again. After our meal, we went next door to the crow's nest for a salted caramel espresso martini.
Tucked away behind the dessert section in the Keys on Deck 8 is Green & Co featuring Mitsuhana. This is two restaurants in one with a vegan menu and a sushi bar. We specifically booked Mitsuhana for a sea day sushi lunch and couldn't believe how quiet it was. We were the only ones to have sushi for lunch and there were only a couple of tables in for the vegan menu. This doesn't accurately reflect the quality of the sushi. This was excellent. The sushi is freshly prepared in front of you and everything is individually priced on the menu. We decided to order the maki platter with yellowfin tuna and spring onion and the truffle brushed highland salmon with avocado for £22. We then had two portions of the salmon and avocado yuramaki which was £6 each and we could have ordered a lot more but as it was only lunchtime we, we tried to restrain ourselves. Everything at Mitsuhana was beautifully presented and if you enjoy sushi we'd highly recommend it. Another specialty dining experience you can book on Piano Avia is the Limelight Club on Deck 6. We didn't go here on Avia but have previously been on Britannia. This is essentially a dinner and a show with a guest performer. On our cruise the one and only Chesney Hawks was in the Limelight Club but other regular Limelight Club performers include Gareth Gates, Claire Sweeney and Lavoie. Prices are £25 to £35 per person and if you want to go booking before the cruise is recommended because they fill the tables from the front to the back. The later you book the further back in the room you will sit. The glass house on deck 7 in the Grand Atrium is becoming as well known for its small plates as it is its wine. We simply ran out of time to try the glass house on Avia but it's definitely worth stopping by for lunch or booking for a lighter dinner option. The menu includes small plates to accompany your wine. You can expect dishes like spicy fried chicken wings, scallops, meatballs, cheese, tiger prawns and vegan options. Another notable paid option is the Keel & Cow. This place seems a little lost on deck 8 of the Grand Atrium and reminded us of a pub you'd find next to a Premier Inn, but apparently they do a great breakfast. If you've tried the Keel & Cow, let us know what you think in the comments. There are two places you can get ice cream and gelato on Arvia, but sadly these are not included in your cruise. The first is Ripples on deck 8, serving gelato, sundaes, a gelato afternoon tea and bite-side gelato treats. I went for a rum and raisin gelato in a chocolate dipped waffle. Cone. You can also get gelato and ice lollies from Sundays in the Sky Dome on deck 16. Here's the full list of gelato flavours with prices so you can see if anything takes your fancy. We also tried the room service on Avia which arrived very quickly after ordering using the telephone in our cabin. We opted for the P&O Cruises Club sandwich which came with a portion of fries for £5.95 plus a £2.50 delivery fee. Room service is available 24 hours a day with various menus depending on the time of day. We'll leave a link in the description so you can see the full room service menu. One of the main things we noticed about the food and dining on P&O Arvia was there was just so much choice on offer. There are eight included options which means you can definitely enjoy a range of different meals throughout your cruise without spending anything extra. We absolutely loved the Keys for its fish and chips and katsu curry and we also liked that steak and chips were served in the main dining room every evening if you wanted it. Breakfast in the main dining rooms was definitely a much more enjoyable experience compared to the buffet. Our biggest disappointment was the chef's table. We weren't impressed with the quality of the food or the setting so if you don't manage to book a table here on celebration night we don't think you should be disappointed. If you want to spend a little extra, we found the quality of the food served in the specialty restaurants to be fantastic. And the prices were justified. You definitely couldn't eat as well at home for the same price. To continue finding out more about Avia, we'd recommend you take a look at this video next.